G'day, welcome to Ferguson Brothers Rail. In this chapter of our small portable end scale layout build, we're going to talk about how we design the circuits. Now we finished wiring the tracks and the switches, and for those of you who are new to the channel, we decided to do everything in analog. This would keep the cost down and we'd learn some electronics along the way. And that I certainly have. Let's go and take a look. In the fictitious town of Where Am I, there are two loops. One loop is for transporting mining material down the mountain, and the other loop simulates a train coming into the town. To keep things interesting for operators, we wanted to allow for a few possibilities. Allow two trains to run continuously on one loop each. Allow a single operator to control the entire layout with one controller. Or allow two operators to run trains at the same time with their own controllers. This took a while to figure out, because when we started the layout, we weren't planning on allowing this level of control. Some of the challenges included managing polarity changes, trying to trigger LED lights independently from the voltage controllers, and allowing multiple trains to move around the track without any current leaks. Part of the solution is a triple pole double throw switch. With the flick of one switch, we can control multiple circuits at the same time. Now two of the poles determine whether the power is flowing through to the track from controller one or controller two. And the third pole of the switch is uh, controlling whether the LED illuminates yellow or blue. And this will be used on the control box so we can tell who has power of that section of track. Let's have a look at the circuit diagram to try and help visualize this. This illustration shows two AC controllers, one DC controller, and two switches. Let's start by turning on the DC transformer. And now we'll turn on the two AC transformers. You can see there is current flowing into the switches, but they're still in the center off position, so nothing is getting through to the LED lights or the track. Now, the first switch is set to controller one. This is allowing current to flow from controller one into block one. It's also allowed power to light up the yellow side of the bipolar LED. You'll notice each positive feed into the LED passes through a resistor. Since the blue is much brighter than the yellow, it has more resistance. Now I've changed switch one to the controller two position. Current flows into block one from controller two and the LED lights up blue. I can choose to power the blocks using any combination of off, yellow or blue. This diagram only shows two switches, but there are six in total. The track is broken into six independently powered sections of track. We call these sections blocks. Insulated track joiners ensure that each block is powered separately. Each of the two main loops as a section of track where trains can wait for switching operations. While it may seem redundant, we chose to power everything independently. Some care is still required when trains cross blocks to ensure there are no power conflicts. But this is perhaps one of the distinctions between a toy train and model railway layout. I hope you got something out of this video. Please remember to support us by subscribing or commenting on our channel. I've included a link to the page that has our circuit diagram as a downloadable PDF. Cheers, see you next time.